when we more learn about the migratory behavior of birds diurnal and nocturnal migration can be seen on the basis of their wing powers and method of getting food william brewster divided the birds into the following three categories like night flyers day flyers and three few birds such as geese and ducks migrate both by night and day so arctic tern great shearwater black headed bunting black pole warbler american golden plover all these are long distance migrant birds so first one is the night flyers small birds such as passerine birds sparrows titmice jays crows etc cuckoos and woodpeckers these are all night flyers then comes the day flyers large birds such as hawks pigeons shallows and robins they are day flyers and then few birds such as geese and ducks migrate both by day and night the day flyers are usually restless and strong winged this can feed while on wings while less danger least a danger of enemies and can migrate to long distance turkey vultures to turkey buzzard cover a distance of 3600 miles without a stop broad winged birds such as eagle storks and cranes use thermal currents for soaring by which they spend less energy for flight night flyers are usually small birds darkness provides them protection from large predatory birds it also helps birds opportunity of using all the daylight hours for feeding thereby enabling them to build up sufficient energy resources for sustaining long period of flight further bird migration does not always take place by means of flight penguins breed on the line of antarctica continent in the winter they move hundreds of kilometers by floating on pecks of ice and return south in summer they cover a greater part of the distance by swimming in the sea and march to their nesting sites migratory gallemon in the distance by swimming in the sea and march to their nesting sites migratory gallemots mostly swim and american coot walks 4 kilometers across the country now let's move on to the next topic that is the range of migration the distance traveled by migratory birds depend upon the local conditions and the species concerned the longest distance of about 70600 kilometers is covered by the arctic tern which migrates from north to the edge of antarctica during summer arctic tern is found in canada and greenland which is in its breeding grounds during winter it migrates to antarctic islands in south via south america and africa and at the end of summer it returns back to its breeding grounds likewise golden plover migrates from the arctic tundra to the pampas of argentina the pectoral sand pepper that breeds in arctic tundra migrates to its winter home in south america the most spectacular of all migrants in europe is white stork sharks spend summer in europe but spend the winter in south africa birds of north india and of the base of himalayas visit the places in the south periodically to avoid the winter and go back in summer altitude of migration formerly it was thought that birds while migrating traveled very high and with a very fast speed however recent knowledge obtained by telescope radar and radio telemetry has pointed out a great variation some birds fly at sea level some fly very close to the height of mount everest most birds fly less than 7400 feet above sea level flying speed during migration flying speeds of migratory birds have been measured by doppler radar it was found out that that the speed ranged from 32 to 64 kilo mph in small songbirds while in large birds such as cranes speed varies from 
ஃபோர்ட்டி டு நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் கிலோமீட்டர் பர் ஹவர் ஸ்மாலர் பர்ச்சிங் பேர்ட்ஸ் கேன் ஃப்ளை தேர்ட்டி டூ டு ஃபிஃப்டி நைன் கேஎம் பிஹெச் வரஸ் ஃபால்கன்ஸ் டக்ஸ் அண்ட் கீஸ் ஃப்ளை அட் அ ஸ்பீட் ஆஃப் செவன்டி செவன் டு நைன்டீன் சிக்ஸ் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் கிலோமீட்டர் பர் ஹவர் ஹமிங் பேர்ட் ஃப்ளை தேர்ட்டி டூ கிலோமீட்டர் பர் ஹவர் அண்ட் சேண்ட் பிப்பர்ஸ் ஃப்ளை தேர்ட்டி சிக்ஸ் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் கிலோமீட்டர் பர் ஹவர் ஒரிஜின் ஆஃப் மைக்ரேஷன் செவரல் ஹைப்போத்திஸ் செவ்வின் ப்ரப்போஸ்ட் டு அப்டெயின் ஒரிஜின் ஆஃப் மைக்ரேஷன் பட் நன் இஸ் சஃபிஷியன்ட் டு அப்டெயின் த ஃபினாமினன் ஆஃப் மைக்ரேஷன் நார்தர்ன் அண்ட் சிஸ்டர்ல் ஹோம் ஹைப்போத்திஸ் அக்கார்டிங் டு திஸ் வியூ இன் த ப்ரெப்ளிஸ்டோசின் பீரியட் ப்ரெப்ளிஸ்டோசின் பீரியட் பேர்ட்ஸ் இன்ஹேபிட்டட் நார்தர்ன் அமீஸ்வியர் அண்ட் வேர் நான் மைக்ரேட்டரி in the place to seen when the glacier first its way from north to south the birds migrated to south to save themselves from intense cold to save themselves from intense cold in the following summer when the ice melted birds returned to their nests in north ultimately this practice become hereditary in the lamarckian fashion southern ancestral home hypothesis according to this hypothesis the bird population in the southern tropics become congested in the past so that some of the birds migrated to the north for breeding purpose and returned to the south as soon as breeding was over by removing by moving north northward they took advantage of longer days which is necessary for gathering food etc during the breeding period hypothesis of periodic response this is understood that the tropical birds inhabited colder northern parts in the past where plenty of food was present but this had to fly to south when the cold increased so much in winter and food becomes scarce due to hibernation of insects woodbury explained that by this migration since the birds survived from the intensed cold intense cold it become a habit of the birds and ultimately in course of time the habit was naturally selected cause of migration causes of migration that is the next major topic shortage of food supply on the breeding ground with the end of summer in the northern hemisphere where the birds breed food supply falls short due to increase in the number of birds as a result of breeding and secondarily due to the beginning of hibernation of insects it causes birds to migrate south next cause is the environmental factor according to some workers fall and rise in the temperature are responsible for migration this environmental conditions change the endocrine state and metamorpho metabolic conditions of the birds in such a way as to cause migration next point is the internal factors some birds migrate due to the physiological changes in the gonads and sex hormones which occur with changes in the season next point is the photoperiodism the effect of length of day or photoperiodism triggers bird migration the day length effect pituitary and pineal body in the brain which in turn prepare birds for migration the migratory restlessness is initiated from this stage for example in the increase in day length starting from february march onward induces the siberian brain to migrate to their breeding habits in siberia on the contrary decrease in photo period starting from september to october onwards induces the siberian birds to migrate to indian subcontinent so they will be coming to india during september and october months so fat deposition according to wolfson the substantial subcutaneous and visceral fat deposits play an important role in migration of the species so now about navigation navigation way finding or navigation in migratory birds is done with the help of landmarks such as great river valleys coastal lines chains of oceanic islands and mountain ranges however a large number of bird migrants travel at night when they cannot easily make use of landmarks 
there it has been suggested that nocturnal night flies migrants take the help of during the night they can easily make use of this landmarks there it has been suggested that nocturnal night flyers migrants take the help of constellations of stars it is proposed that birds are guided by tradition based on experience during migration birds seek guidance for one year from those birds who have followed well in the previous years a german ornithologist gustav kramer has shown that migratory birds which travel by day orient themselves by the position of sun sun compass mechanism however the sun compass orientation is an instinctive behavior since young birds that have never migrated before make similar navigational orientations to sun and traveling independent of their parents are the advantages of migration securing a better climate for living by avoiding unfavorable climate conditions such as intense cold snowfall hot summer stormy conditions securing a better climate for living by avoiding unfavorable climate conditions such as intense cold snowfall hot summers stormy conditions etc and food storage by migrating by alternatively exploiting two different habitats for food due to migration more birds are able to exist geographical wandering or change in habitat provides greater variety in birds diets the long summer days provide birds with long waking hours to gather food to feed young ones at their breeding grounds the migratory birds arrive in large numbers since the pressure of predation is divided among a greater number of eggs and young and this result in greater individual survival migration provides certain evolutionary benefits a long distance migrant is subjected to different kinds of natural selection pressures in its breeding ground its winter quarters different kinds are and divide on journey between two habitats indeed migratory birds have a greater range of adaptability than a resident birds migration promotes the geographical dispersal of birds dispersal may isolate small populations of a species from each other it tend to increase the rate of evolution isolating mechanism what are the disadvantages of migration migration is disadvantageous to the birds in the following ways a journey without rest is tiresome for the birds and most of the passive birds succumb at sea seven changes in weather pouring of heavy rain or snow or blowing of stormy wind sometimes perish a number of migrants the young and defenseless birds are exposed to various natural enemies predatory birds and hunters the telegraphic wires towers lighthouses etc sometimes take a great toll of migratory birds now let's learn about methods of study of bird migration following methods are used to study migration in birds banding or ringing it is most popular method of studying bird migration large scale ringing has enabled ornithologists to plot migratory path or routes of many bird species there are various methods of banding migratory birds throughout the world ringing methods involve the use of colored metal or plastic leg bands systematically numbered and having the address of the banding agency to which the recovery of the banded bird may be reported the birds are first caught or trapped alive in a large number by using mist nest or boom nest this nest is torn torn into air by explosives and spread out by metal ways which soars over a flock of birds the bird banding laboratory the bird banding laboratory at Torrell and Maryland in USA have maintained more than 30 million banding records and add a million new ones every year in India at 
Kyolardio National Park, Bharatpur, extensive research on migratory birds is in progress, especially on the, their ecology, behavior and migratory routes. The work, work is primarily being constructed by Bombay Natural History Society, BNHS, Bombay Natural History Society, in collaboration with the State Forest Department. BNHS is the only authorized institution to carry out bird banding studies in India. BNHS, that is the natural, Bombay Natural History Society, Bombay Natural History Society. BNHS is the only authorized institution to carry out bird banding studies in India. More than 1 lakh birds have been ringed in India between 1973 to 1998. Tagging of another animals. For tracking animals during homing and migration, plastic or metallic bands are placed around the legs of birds or around the wing bones of bats. This bats, this bands can be color coded and may have identifying numbers on them. The movement of fishes may be followed by capturing them and marking their fins with numbered tags. Sea turtles have been tracked using balloons attached to their shells. The balloons bob along the surface of the water as the turtle swims. In one of the studies, Spanish and Turkestan sparrows ringed at Paratpur were recovered in Kazakhstan. By using ring technique, it has been possible to establish the migratory routes of birds. The main migratory routes of birds in India run down the valleys for the Indus in the west and Brahmaputra in the east, ringing at the Bharatpur has established that European shallows return not only to the same locality but even to the same place for nest building purposes every year, covering a distance of thousands of kilometers. Migratory birds of Kyolandio National Park. A total of 360 studies of birds have been recorded from Kyolandio National Park and a great majority of them are migratory. Most birds migrate from Himalaya, Ladakh, Tibet, Central Asia, Siberia and Eastern Europe. Some of the most commonly seen migratory bird species are grey lag goose, pintail, common teal, guardwall, shovelers, tufted duck, crested, pochard, common, pochard, mallards, vegan, common, shelled duck, marble teal, in Bharatpur, winter migration of birds start in the August with the arrival of a garganery, garganate teals and ends in the December by the arrival of the Siberian cranes. The return migration of most bird species starts in March by collecting dead migratory birds killed at television towers or by airport salometers or other human-made high towers and poles interfering with migration not. Salometer is a photoelectric device used by a mercury vapor lamp to determine the ceiling height of clouds under all weather conditions. That is what is ceilometer. By tape recording or chip counting, the bird calls through a tape recorder with the help of a parabolic receiver, microphone and amplifier. This is used to estimate the number of migratory birds by calculating the call notes heard at night. Next one is about radio tracking. Modern technological methods of radar and radio tracking, tracking have largely superseded out earlier means of observing birds with binoculars. Now individual birds can be spotted on their migratory routes and their course and behavior can be determined over longer distances with a great deal of precision. Miniature transmitters weighing 2 to 3 grams have been developed in the USA, easily carried by small birds. These terminators send a signal that may then be located by means of a stationary direction finding aerials.
or by vehicles and aeroplanes. The routes of many migratory birds have been tracked with this method. Researchers are now working on a largely automatic method of tracking birds on their migrations with the aid of satellites. Radar tracking. With the use of radar tracking instruments, much knowledge has been gained about what happens to birds on their migration. In contrast with the flight monitoring radar instruments used earlier, this new device detects individual birds and automatically keeps an eye on them. With a migratory bird passes the instrument at a greater or lesser angle, the exact range, bearing and altitudes as well as ongoing changes in these values can be recorded or printed out and the animal's course of flight relative to the ground can be plotted on a chart. Furthermore, the bird's wing beat frequency can be determined. This identifies or at least indicates the species and ensures that the same individual is still being tracked. Finally, the exact migratory routes of individual birds as well as other bits of information can be recorded from the natural course of events during the flight as they occur within the range of radar instrument. Then comes the laboratory methods. There are some aspects of bird migration that we can study in the laboratory where the animal live in cages or aviaries. Here we can conduct conditioning experiments or we can perform tests on birds in the state of intense activity characteristic of migratory restlessness. One of the results found with conditioning experiments was that birds use the sun as a compass. Now let's learn about a new topic that is nothing else but the migratory restlessness. In experimenting with birds that are ready to migrate, researchers take advantage of the fact that even with the best care, these animals will become restless, jumping and fluttering about in their cage as the time of migration approaches. The activity for such bird can be recorded by an ingenious method. The bird sits on an ink pad located inside a funnel or cone covered with a bloating paper. It can look at the sky through the wire mesh cage cover. While attempting to leave the cone in an upward flight direction, the bird strains the blotting paper with its footprints. The experimenter then assesses the amount of ink staining on the paper. Under certain conditions, activity during migratory restlessness becomes directional, usually corresponding to the species-specific direction of migration. Next topic is the homing. Homing is a complex instinctive behavior of migratory fish, birds and other animals. It compels an animal to return to its original locality after taking migratory journeys. The homing instinct is seen most predominantly in the salmon, fish inhabiting smaller water bodies such as lakes, pools and ponds also have this remarkable instinct and if displaced, they can return to their home territories. Jerking in 1959 has aptly defined homing as the return of animal to a place formerly occupied instead of going to other equally probably new places. If pigeon, for example, are sent by a rail in closed basket to several kilometers away and they are set at library, they liberty, they will return to their loft which they can recognize without any error. Thus, they share with the rest of the migratory birds a certain sense of orientation and homing. That is what is termed as a homing.